Hey, what's going on guys? Mike Glover, Black Rifle Coffee Company. Today we're talking about light considerations in everyday carry on this episode of Pro Tips. Guys, ah, man, I want to lie to you and have you mount all the cool light, lights to all your guns and, and run and gun like that, but that's just not practical. Uh, what I've realized over time is this Victor 1, for example, from Surefire, is a good standalone light. If you mount that to your everyday carry Pistola, then you're limiting your ability. One of the reasons you're limiting your ability is because a light tethered to your gun doesn't allow you to use a light in utility. Yes, you can carry multiple lights if you're into that. And maybe the answer is carry a light on your gun and carry a light separate from your gun. But I haven't found many justifications for putting a light on the gun. And bear with me, naysayers, bear with me and let me explain. So I have a cell phone here. This is an iPhone standard cell phone. You're looking at 12 lumens to 50 lumens. Uh, most people would think or associate lumens with strength or better quality or better lights. So if I say I got a 10,000 lumens and you got a 5,000 lumens, well, yours is smaller than mine. But that's not the case here. Because what we forget often in using lights is that we are giving off a signature in the use of that light, but we are also blinding ourselves with the use of that light. So this is the Surefire Victor 1, 250 lumens. Most lights now, because this is a little bit old, I'm a little dated, I like the utility of things that work and this works for me. I don't need the new upgraded version, but most lights now are 500 lumens. And if you have a 500 lumens light, you could blind yourself by putting out that light from your position for up to five seconds. So I teach SWAT teams as part of what I do uh, with Philcraft Survival. And always what I'll do with uh, specific SWAT teams that use lights on guns and part of their SOP, their standard operating procedure is to enter room using lights, meaning they don't have night vision goggles and infrared lasers or floodlights, is I'll have them come into a room and they'll stream their light all over the place. When you stream your light, you're trying to identify friend from foe and intention when you're identifying friend from foe. So imagine you go downstairs in your situation where you illuminate a living room space. That's your home. That's your domicile. You know it better than anybody's gonna know it. And when you shine that light, you're giving away your position. In the case of SWAT teams, you have slivers of the pie being covered by your mates. That's normal, that's CQB. But in a home defense scenario where it's just you providing your own self-defense, when you emit that light, you're giving away your position and you're blinding yourself wherever you look. Here's what I want you to do, because some of you won't believe me. Um, have somebody, a spouse, a friend, or if you have no friends because you're lonely, um, get a number or a thing and put it in front of you. As long as you could identify that thing, that number, that friend, put the light on them in complete darkness and then turn the light off. And then I, what I want you to do is count and count until you see with your night vision what it is that you just illuminated. Uh, what we've seen is it's about five seconds of loss of blinding and taking away my night sight. So I like night sights because I want ambient light to get the advantage of the night and not emit a bright light that's gonna give me away. Now, that's how night vision works, by the way. Night vision works similar to your eye. If you have no loom, like no light, no ambient trickles of light, night vision won't work. It works better with ambient light. It works better with loom, with moonlight. So, I'm not saying don't have a light, because I think you should have a light, period, for everyday carry, as I do my Victor One. But you could, positively identify friend from foe with less than 100 lumens. I mean, look at the light on your uh, cell phone. If that's 50 lumens, and you did the same thing that I told you to do with 500 lumens, 
you will cut that time in half. In fact, it will be a couple seconds, one or two seconds total. I also think about the position that I'm in with my pistola. So in this case, I have my SIG 320. I have my fancy Leupold red dot optic. I'm sight hunting, right? I'm looking for potential threats. I always want you to orient your... Orient, it's so funny, it's such a funny word. I want you to orient your eyes where the gun is. Because if your eyes are oriented where your gun is not, because you don't have a shooting solution, when you identify potentially a threat, then you're potentially dead. Uh, it only takes two tenths of a second in, on average of somebody's reaction time. So if a barrel of a gun is pointed at you and your gun's oriented this way and you identify the threat this way, well, that's not gonna work. So if you're thinking about your perspective as well, or in this case, let's think about the bad guy's perspective. If I have a pistol and it's in line with my eyes and then I use the light offset from this handed uh, position, then what I'm doing is creating a signature up and away from where I'm located. I don't want to give away my position. If you use a light behind your gun, you're illuminating the gun, which is the sights, but exactly where your position is at. I mean, you might as well just do this, right? And in self-defense where you have the ability in close confined spaces, most often, carry it with one hand, allow your hand to float and orient in the direction of your eyes and segment this. One of the best things I like tactical night fighting tacticians to teach is the use of reflection of your flashlight off of walls, off of floors, off of ceilings. You know, when we used to hit houses in Baghdad, Iraq, and you had marble floors, that light would splash all over the house and you'd give, your way, give away your position. Well, most houses nowadays have um, laminated wood or carpet, which diffuses light. But you can get real creative in your own home in identifying what light source you use and how it reflects light. Do that because the fear for me, for you, is you separate your light from the gun, but you shine it in one direction. Uh, that could be a point of domination, where you think something is. And then where's the bad guy hiding? In the dark, where he should be. Don't give away your position. Also, I, I think about the utility of a light and how often I use it. I use this light to check under the hood, um, to check under the vehicle, uh, to peek around bushes where I would never need a gun in line with this light because I'm using it in utility. The right answer is carrying both a light on your gun and this. I don't find the need to put a light on my gun. And here's one significant reason why. Because I'm not up out late at night. I'm not a night dweller. You know where my butt's at? I'm watching Netflix, watching Yellowstone, and I am very smart about my tactics in doing that. I don't wanna be outside where the majority of self-defense actions happen at night. So that's just my pattern of life. If you work at night, like you work the night shift, you're walking to your vehicle at night, yeah, a lot of justification for that. But we're not always gonna be in that self-defense encounter in the middle of an open parking lot with ambient light where you shine the light from your gun oriented at the bad guy. You got to think about angles, you got to think about reflection, and most certainly you got to think about your position and looking at light. Yeah, sure, 500 lumens will blind the heck out of a bad guy, but it will also do the same to you. Remember that. All right, guys, everyday carry considerations, there's many variables in how we articulate this world. There's not any one specific way to do it, especially with the different environments that we operate in. So take this knowledge and this particular pro tip and just add it to your toolkit and your bag of tricks. Till next time, stay alert, stay alive.